So, you know, the main thing with this uh, thing today is uh, internalized levitation, and a critical part is the non-magnetic bearing. They use this in uh, food processing where oil is banned because it's a very dangerous introduction to your food supply. And here is the magnet that I use, a three-incher, you know, and you can see if that was a metal bearing, it would stick like glue and screw everything up. So what I did was uh, put an inch and a half narrowed down and uh, so it could slide up and down. So as I put weight on it, it slid up. So at uh, 30 pounds, uh, the, it went about halfway. That was the motor part. Then the uh, magnets in the generators, it went a quarter of an inch. And then the top uh, was only a sixteenth of an inch. So it left about a quarter of an inch. So effectively, the apparatus you've seen weighs nothing. It's the force of gravity is completely opposed uh, on the whole column by the magnet and the bearing keeps the axle from moving even if you're going up and down a hill. You see what I mean? If you only had the magnets and no bearing, when you turned it to 10 degrees, it would slide off. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, they're a stabilizer. And they introduce so little friction that it makes it a big generator complex could be like your CD, you know, of your small computer that's lightweight, you know. And here's the configuration of magnets that I used uh, to lock around the plastic uh, axle. And I couldn't get a fiber axle uh, more than a, a quarter of an inch. And so I got plastic, and this is a half-inch piece of plastic, and unfortunately it curved. Uh, Five-foot length of it curved, and uh, you'll see it sort of blocked some of the experiment. Here's the size of the... The last video, you know, I doubled the magnets, and this is one example, and I made another one here with three generators, which I haven't demonstrated in one night because I went on from there. I woke up with a dream that I only put three of them, the three that the, the driver turned on, the electromagnetic driver, and the others I left as one. And it worked beautifully. Instead of vibration, there was no vibration because there was no attraction every other one, but it lightened things. So, to come here with the new model, what I've done here is I made 12 magnets instead of 6. And I said, hey, for the turning off, all I need is small magnets. And I got this from a Quanta electric generator, a fellow on the net on YouTube that you can look up. Uh, who put it on the outside of a conventional motor. So there's a double magnet that turns on your driver, and then in between the smaller two magnets further away that turn it off. And I didn't know if this would work, but I've done one very brief test and it works. How, if it works by spinning it as fast as these smaller ones, I don't know yet. Building on top. And this is not the inverted air, this is more like a frontal air when you're going. But uh, it should be bigger, it's only 16 inches in diameter, but it should be 20 or 22. And you can see how much it adds to the uh, electronic part. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's cut. The air turbine part works better than the other part, right? Yeah. Whew. But look at here. 1.69, 3.39, 2.55, you know. 10, that was only delivering 10 volts, and this was only delivering 8.3. 
I, man, I had them up to 16 and 17. So these were like going half power, basically. I didn't know that. I figured they'd be at 16 or 18, right? Unless, you know, they're going down because uh, I'm turning everything off. But anyway, you took a look, right? Yeah. I want to show the type of air turbine, which is somewhat different from the uh, frontal one and uh, the ones that the weather people use from uh, the, the wind. Uh, this is an, made to be an inversion one. It's made very lightly. This is aluminum from a heat thing, but should be plastic. These are the fins, and you see they're spiraled in. And I have six here, but it could be wider. This is on a serving tray, but if it was 20 or 22 inches, like on the, the plan of the Nixie, the car, it, it would be have maybe 12 of these plastic ones. And uh, you put holes in the top, equal to the number between each fin, so that air is invited to come up through and spin the, the spirals. The spirals actually can be leaning in at the top so that the air coming in will push you know, on, on all levels of the spiral. And in that way, a gentle motion can be generated all the time, which saves on your electronic drivers when you switch those on to take off. Now, as an emergency thing, this is, I had first thought that a father would hold his son, one-year-old son in his hand and have him spin them to show how generating, easy generating energy is. And then I suddenly had in my mind, hey, great-grandpa, you broke your arm turning a crank on your Model T Ford, right, the first Ford. <laughs> Yeah, you know, every time you give these a spin, I mean, you can spin them with one finger, you know, and you don't need to wait for the inverted uh, wind to do them. Unfortunately, my, uh, my plastic flexible bent axle there, which should be uh, carbon fiber, you know, best and aluminum second, right? Actually, I'd like to see an elimination of all metals except the magnets and the drivers, paramagnetic and super paramagnetic material, because the dialectic material of aluminum and brass and so on, uh, platinum and so on, uh, influence the magnetic field, you know. But, you know, that can be improved. That's the first prototype you just witnessed. And this is the first prototype held with glue and scotch tape, right, <laughs> with uh, some scrap plastic from a roll and uh, a little bit of a stopper here with tape and uh, uh, plumbing uh, copper. So I was amazed that it worked so well. You just saw the first run. And uh, this is the dome. This ties in with what we were saying about the moon uh, tower culture and the Martian tower count, uh, culture, which are creating atmospheres to terraforming their planet, because they're releasing oxygen from the deep underground, and it's going up and it's turning turbines like this to generate the power that releases the oxygen, and at the same time they store it at the top of the tower where they live, during their work breaks and sleep periods and so on and so forth, right? And that's the way their culture works to develop their planet. And then when they say Heidegger, Hordegger, or whatever his name is, the Nazi saying, oh yeah, hollow earth, you know, blah, 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 and hollow moon, you know, and uh, hollow Phoebus. Hey, come on, I mean, we mine on earth and we have fairly deep things down to where it's hot, uh, you know, being underground isn't the same as hollowing out the planet, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, the point is that this pre type of presentation has taken place on many planets. We've uh, demonstrated this in different ways, but the elements, even though the technology is different, 
in different civilizations, you know, and the, and the uh, uh, conditions of life, like we're pointing out with the moon and Mars, different than Earth, but this type of thing with the aid of electronics can uh, run your, your surface cars by internalizing levitation rather than the externalizing of the giant mega project of making flying saucers and all of that that the military has been doing the last 20 years on Earth. You know, uh, this is for every man to free him from the central power supply. And uh, there's the same elements on every planet and star system and most of the same molecules. Not all the same molecules, but most of them. In fact, we have arguments, you know, this is the first bearing, non-magnetic bearing, it's made by one German company, right? All the other bearings seem to be steel. So there's a case of uh, the glass bear, a, a thing with self-lubricating nanoplastic uh, spheres to lubricate the glass, hard glass uh, uh, rollers here. And this is old fashioned, they're trying, they've got a new line with many, many tiny little spheres instead of these big ones that are more like a conventional thing. I, so far, I don't think it works for some purposes, but not for the purposes here. But here's a case of molecules that didn't exist on Earth 50 years ago, the plastic, the, the lubricating, and now exist. And there's still, you know, if I need a fiber thing, there's my fishing rod that I didn't use on the small one, reinforcing it to straighten it out the plastic acrylic one. It's a primitive kind of plastic. That was the only thing available I could find available. And I, I'm fairly uh, aggravated by that, you know, because with a straight thing, uh, a straight axle, and I, by the way, the other ones I used a tube on top of the axle of uh, the computer people, right? And I found the tube worked quite nice, you know. And I felt leery because uh, axles have to be centered and so on and so forth by engineering precision, you know. And I, again, I, because of my, because of my magnets and my, uh, and my bearings, I had to make them fairly thin. Now here's an example. While I was working on the vertical levitation bearings, uh, people have refined the horizontal. And uh, here's the, the big magnets mounted, right? It's supposed to float in the center. And the most recent one I saw, I saw one with one big one and an aluminum halter, and then one with two on each end. And here I put the bearing on the outside to stabilize it from road use where you're going to hit bumps and things like that, and it's going to pull it right off, plus the weight and so on. But it doesn't work right because the magnets are too, uh, the circle in the middle is too small and they're too powerful. They need four inch ones that are thinner so that it's a weaker field so that it's more easily balanced. And that has to be balanced out uh, to a certain extent because the weaker and bigger they are, the less weight they'll hold. So in, in other words, the same magnetic bearings that we use to lift the vertical one can be used to stabilize the horizontal one and make it possible to be rotable, you know, under changing conditions, you know. Like a rain. Uh, anybody who plays tennis will know that when it rained on the court, on the clay courts, the balls will be heavy, you know, and you'll use a heavier racket and you'll hit it harder, right? And uh, with the sun, it'll have light balls that bounce really high, and so on and so forth. So it's the same thing here. As the blades were by uh, turning the generators, as the frontal air pressure builds up, it may be wet, in which case it'll cause more uh, weight on the axle, which the bearings will then uh, take. And the next video, I hope to have this uh, finished. They've increased the price of the magnets since we began this series of videos. And uh, there's a lot of hassle now about uh, rare earth substances that go into the neo magnets, you know. Uh, Japan ran out of its supply, the smuggling routes of Vietnam were cut off. The U U.S. military has been making demands because they've been winding down a lot of programs and so on and so forth. And it's affecting me in Canada here too, you know, that the uh, 
They're supposedly open to mines, but the environmental conditions are such that they're going to send it for processing to China anyway, right? They've cleaned up their industry in China after a wildcat period, and uh, the magnets keep improving. These are 42s, and they're up to 52, 54, 56, which is double or triple the magnetic power of these by additional doping, you know? These doped metals are uh, frequently that way, you know? You saw it with uranium, this, and uh, 235 and 238, then plutonium, then uh, zirconium, di di you know, uh, californium di doping, and so on and so forth. So, basically, here's the Nixie uh, showing the top, and the uh, things have now moved in behind the two passengers, and so the storage area is outside rather than within them. And, uh, and as far as I can see, the top spinners work. And our, uh, I got the idea from Stephen King, who's a book on uh, the Kennedy assassination, changing it around. And he saw it as a miserable world that had been nuked because Kennedy was weak <laughs> or something, and he should be assassinated, which I thought was a rather dumb storyline, but, uh, you know, that's what he said. There was no reason the guy to be anonymous. It was a total misinterpretation by a right-wing fanatic, the Dulles brothers, you know, who we completely misunderstood uh, the road to socialism as it was expressing and was the only one available to uh, disorganized peasant culture. You know, they made the same mistake in Korea. You know? And now it's all starting to come down the line, finally, you know, with Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and so on. You're not taking pictures of this, are you? 